let me introduce to you all our uh, speaker for the session, Dr. Anir Anirudhan P, uh, Professor of Government Engineering College, Calicut. He is the professor at Department of Mechanical Engineering, Government Engineering College, Calicut, and was the former scientist at Baba Atomic Research Center, Trombe. He completed his BTEC from the University of Calicut and secured his PG and PhD from IIC Bangalore. It is indeed a pleasure to have you here, sir. I, on behalf of Malabar subsection, cordially welcome you to this session. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, your article. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm here to discuss with you in this webinar, which is about roadmap to success in engineering studies. And we, as you all know, I'm going to discuss something or share with you some aspects related to mechanical engineering. So I, first of all, I thank the organizers, IEEE for giving me an opportunity to be part of this webinar which is indeed a proud privilege. So I'll be spending some 20, 20 to 24 minutes on what I have to say, and then maybe I'll have the remaining six or five minutes for answering your queries. Now, what is, so first of all, I'm going to address what is engineering? What is mechanical engineering? How does it differ from other branches? Why is, what is the role of a mechanical engineering in society? So all those things we'll see in due course. So I'm moving on to the next slide. You see, if you see around you, all those objects around, around us, like other than those what are given by the mother nature in the form of rivers, I mean, uh, forest, animals and plants, all other objects are man-made. All other objects, all other objects are man-made. Now, if you see, say for example, houses, buildings, bridges, roads and dams and airports, we will always ascribe those products to be belonging to civil engineering. On the other hand, if you see uh, other objects like say, for example, nuts, bowls, washers, bearings, metallic components, machines, engines, pumps, automobiles, aircrafts, missiles, submarines, and robots, all those things, all those entities or commodities or products, we would generally ascribe them to be belonging to mechanical engineering. So we are going to discuss about those things. Now, in addition to this, we will have chemical engineering, which will have products or commodities or engineered products related to oils and lubricants, chemicals, chemical reactors, heat exchangers and agitators, etc., etc. And similarly, you know that when we are dealing with motors, dynamos and generators and power lines and UPS systems, they are related to electrical engineering. And then coming on to electronics engineering, they deal with radars, antennas, mobiles, computer hardware, and so on and so forth. So we generally tend to group or classify those man-made components or items into different categories. This list is by no means exhaustive. You will have other forms of engineering also. These are the, these are some of the uh, common engineering products. So we are going to deal with these components, nuts, bolts, washers, bearings, metallic components, machines, engines, pumps, etc. And they are all engineered products. They are all man-made projects. So all these products are made by man with a view to serve the society. And there is a brain or there is, there is, there is a need from the society which, man has, which mankind has addressed and then somehow kind of devised and come up with products which will be of ultimate help for the human beings or the society. Now, I'm going to the next slide, it's stuck, I'm trying to do this. Yes. Now, the next question is, what is engineering? Because we always know what doctors do, even before, since you're aspiring engineers, bachelors trying to join engineering courses. See, as a profession, we all know what doctors do. Yeah, nobody will have to explain that this is what a doctor is meant to do, because we all know what doctors do. 
we all know what lawyers are supposed to do, what they are supposed to deliver. But since we don't have an uh, industry culture, and especially in this part of the country, in this part of the state, like we hardly know like what engineers are supposed to do. We often mistake them for me me mechanics and technicians. That is one part which I will address later in my presentation, but we should know what is engineering. So I've taken it from various sources and then I'll just, I've written, written it down here on the slide. I'll go through it once. It's a creative application. So there's a creativity that is involved. It makes use of scientific principles. So the backbone is science. It's physics, maths, and to some extent, chemical chemistry, as far as mechanical engineering is concerned. The branch of this knowledge is intended to design, develop, construct what? Design, develop, and construct structures, machines, apparatus, processes, systems, which are based, which would address social needs basically so engineering is a creative application of scientific principles for design development construction of structures and machines apparatus and processes and systems for social need now if they are not if it is not for designing developing and constructing at least you, the engineer should be able to forecast the performance behavior of engineering systems so that is what an engineer is supposed to do is basically a designer he's an inventor now in addition to all these aspects, what is essential in engineering is economics. There is no engineering without economics because ultimately all these are engineered products which should come to the market and somebody should buy it so that your product is in demand. Economics is involved. And then finally, it should be, it should lead to, it should be safe for the environment, for the society. You see, you cannot have an engine which is fuel efficient, which is power, which is very powerful. But at the same time, if the emission from the engine is too much for the atmosphere, for the environment to bear, it is of no use. So society is of paramount importance when it comes to engineering. Economics is important. Safety to life is also important. Now, these are some very old needs which have come from society, which have challenged the engineers. So on the top here, you can see the construction of pyramids when man started perhaps the first steps in engineering when they transported these large blocks of rock up to the top of the pyramid. And then they started building those bridges. You can see here, there's a bridge here which belongs to the sixth century AD. There's another bridge here. Now there's another bridge here. Now the thing is, this is relatively new, but these are very old ones. So see, if you're just looking at them, then there's a difference between the classes. I mean, they, they have an arched structure, whereas this is not arched. I'm not going to the details of this because this is not the forum to discuss that. But it is curious enough, you know, like it is inquisitive to think like why these bridges are arched while this is not arched. There is an engineering reason for that. Well, if you can answer it at this stage itself, I would say that you have earned half of your civil engineering and mechanical engineering degrees because there's large amount of physics, there's large amount of science, which Professor Harikrishnan and perhaps Professor Viroz was saying that it is related to something which is called as mechanics of solids, which you will learn as part of this course but times have changed now the demands from the society are for a variety of new kinds of systems like you would require robotics there's a demand from robotics there's a demand for clean and sustainable energy there's a demand for very high speed aircrafts when we say high speed it is of the order of 10 times and even more than the speed of sound it's more than 10 max there's a need for man machine interface so all this and then there is a requirement for nanotechnology so all these things are change shifted the focus from classical sciences. And then if you see present day mechanical engineering, it, is, it has joined hands, it's become at, at, at the apex of this, you find that it is a multidisciplinary uh, scheme now, sharing its knowledge with so many other groups, which would, find, which would find solutions to all these challenging problems in society. Now, often people mistake engineers for mechanics and technicians. So we should address this question at the outset itself. Like, are engineers some kind of a super mechanics or technicians? Society, people have a notion that, you know, like they are some kind of a super mechanics. That's the only difference between them. But I would like to tell you that it is not. A mechanic basically would repair a machine. A technician is also a mechanic. Maybe you will use some kind of a diagnosis tool to find fault with the machine, to find where it has gone wrong, and maybe to suggest solution and find, find an answer to for the for his maintenance problem. Whereas an engineer, is supposed to design, develop, invent, and analyze. Maybe when I say all these words now, it won't make sense at this stage because you know you don't know what those things mean. But I would like to 
but I would like to mention that you know that there is an essential difference between this class of people and a general technician or a mechanic because those those people like mechanics and technicians they don't generally design of course there could be good designers there I'm not denying that but the role of the engineer is to design to develop to invent and analyze now I've shown some pictures on this slide which, which are quintessential or which are which you would relate very easily with mechanical engineering you can see a gearbox here you can see a pump here you can see so this is this is an aero engine this is a disc brake unit. This is a this is called as a gyroscope or a gyro. Now we'll see what their implications are, and then we'll see some challenging questions from society related to all this. So what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to show you some very typical examples of mechanical engineering units, mechanical engineering components. And we are going to we are going to think about some useful questions related to them, which would invoke enough curiosity for the mechanical engineering designer if you see on top here on the slide here this is apart from a gearbox this is a this is a part of a gear this is the tooth of a gear which has got which has got damaged here so as a mechanical engineer he's interested to find see look at this gearbox can we design better gearboxes which have more life than the existing ones that is a challenge in front of the mechanical engineer now coming to the pump now we ask this question, can we redesign the rotor or impeller in this pump, which can improve this efficiency? Now you see in the process of this reading, the process of reading them, I've highlighted a few words here. There is a design here, there is a redesign here. So you should focus on those words. Now there is an aero engine here. Like, see, can we make an engine which have better performance? So that is something which is which people have been. This is, these questions are not new, but it is. But it is in the process of serious. Sorry, it is in the process of serious continuous improvement. Now coming to this gyro, this is a part. I mean, since you most of you would have done your plus one and plus two courses in physics, this is from a rotor dynamics problem. It is from your mechanics, which you do in your first year of your plus two uh, plus two course. It's related to rotational dynamics. This is a particular device which is used to stabilize, which is, which is used to control, which is used to stabilize, it is used to control the cruise in missiles and submarines, which is a part of the control system there. Now, as a mechanical engineer, you are interested to ask this question, can we develop control systems for better cruise control? Is it possible? Now, the last one which is here is a disc brake. You know what is a brake? Because there are two surfaces which come into contact and because of the friction, there is a loss of traction, there is a dissipation of energy and there is stoppage. And in fact, it can be used to trans transmit, transmit power also because of frictional loading. So a question that can be asked here is, can we create surfaces with the friction we want? Like, see, when two surfaces are in contact, let's say in one case, it is in an environment of lubricant oil. And in another case, is there is another component where these surfaces are in contact, but then it is in a different medium like air. Now, if your client means if the end user of this product, he wants this system to perform with a coefficient of friction, let us say at around 0.7 in oil. And at the same time, he wants the system to operate in another, in another situation where the coefficient of friction that you require is nearly about 0.2. Can you come, can you design surfaces? That means, can you come up with some surface roughness patterns for these solids, that's so sorry, these surfaces, when they come into contact, that by what reliability can you guarantee that the coefficient of friction between them is going to be what is required by the client? So these are different questions. These are, so I've given some um, uh, very familiar mechanical engineering components, and then I'm trying to describe about like what, what could be the different design issues that, uh, that would prop up in the case of, uh, in, the, I mean, in, the, in the course of profession of a mechanical engineer. So you can see, see there is a design, there is a redesign, there is an issue of making, there is an issue of developing, there is an issue of creating. So all these forms part of the mechanical engineering design. Now you should compare this with what a mechanic, what a mechanic or technician would do. Do you think that they are going to think of all these aspects when they see a component? So, in, so an engineer is supposed to look at these aspects in a different from a different perspective. So I was just give, trying to give you a flavor of what the designs are, what the designer, what the engineer is trying to find and find solutions for. Now, next we look at the mechanical engineering curriculum of typically of what you would learn if you join for a course in BTEC, for a course for BTEC in mechanical engineering. So first of all, we should know what is a curriculum because we already know what is a syllabus. 
the syllabus is a summary of topics in a particular subjects i have written it there whereas a curriculum is overall contents of the subjects for a particular program say for example if you are doing your plus 2 then the curriculum would be like there should be a description of I mean, the, the list of topics in that curriculum would be physics chemistry mathematics computer science say laboratory work related to physics chemistry and computer science now if you look at the syllabus for physics then it will list down there is a there is there is a more complete version of what should be there in that particular subject in terms of what should go in mechanics what should be taught under thermodynamics what should be taught under fluid mechanics what should be taught under elasticity and mechanics of solids strength of materials etc so we are going to look at the curriculum of a typical mechanical engineering program so we know that it spans for eight semesters and then all these these are different subjects that you would undergo when you undergo a course that you will complete this course on btech in mechanical engineer i am not going to read each one of them it is not possible also but we should know that this is around nearly about 61 items i have written there it varies from one university to another university let's put it let's take it as an average of something like 50 to 55 different subjects there 50 to 55 subjects Fifty to fifty-five different subjects. So that's what we are we are seeing there. Now the question is like there are sixty-one entities, or let's say, let's call it as fifty-five entities. Now are they mutually exclusive in the sense are they all independent, or is there any connectivity? Now it is better to know it at the outset as a prospective or an aspirant mechanical engineer to really understand the connectivity between all these different subjects. Which is which is the number being quite large, some fifty to sixty subjects. So, what is their connectivity? So that is what I am going to discuss next. Okay. So, if you take a bird's eye view of this curriculum, then we identify four different landscapes belonging to or connecting all these uh, different subjects. Now, what I have identified here. are four different groups that means if you if you what what i am trying to say is you see there are some 50 to 60 odd subjects which you are supposed to learn out of which some 40 to 40 at least 40 to 42 of them can be grouped into four different classes so there are some remaining groups which are not part of this there is there are some remaining subjects which are not part of this like say for example electrical engineering electronics engineering civil engineering strength of materials laboratory testing which comes under civil engineering etc they are not part of this but they are they are also part of the curriculum i am saying that out of that 50 or 60 we can always find some 40 or 42 of them which can be grouped into four different classes so these are the core classes of mechanical engineering course which can be mainly mechanics which i have shown here there is a materials and manufacturing group there is a thermodynamics group and all throughout this you will find the presence of mathematics permeating this entire space so i repeat if you see a typical mechanical engineering course in mechanical engineering course which runs for around 61 or 50 or 60 different subjects out of that if you take some 40 or 42 of them then you can always classify or you can group them under four major heads they are mechanics materials and manufacturing thermodynamics and mathematics now what comes under mechanics is mechanics of rigid bodies mechanics of deformation or what is called as mechanics of solids or strength of materials mechanics of fluids dynamics of machinery and vibrations so all these subjects would come under mechanics now if you see thermodynamics that group called thermodynamics then these following subjects would be part of thermodynamics one is pure thermodynamics laws like few of them you already know then power plant engineering turbo machinery refrigeration and air conditioning gas dynamics and combustion all these subjects can be grouped under thermodynamics whereas if you see materials and manufacturing the core course there is metallurgy material science and met or otherwise called as materials engineering manufacturing technology computer aided machining production engineering and industrial engineering all those they form part of materials and manufacturing now if you see mathematics now what is the role of mathematics we'll see again in the due in due course when we go further The, the subjects are the courses that you would do under mathematics are differential equations vector calculus eigen values and eigen vectors variational methods tensors statistics and probability now if you i'm i'm going back to that previous slides 
which describe all those 60 or 61 different subjects. You see, I've grouped them. If you just pick those subjects which are shown in red. So in the first semester, there is an engineering mechanics. There is no red in second semester. Whereas if you see the third semester, what is shown in red are mechanics of solids, mechanics of fluids and strength of materials lab. In fourth semester, it is advanced mechanics of solids, fluid machinery, fluid mechanics lab. There is a mechanics of machinery in the fifth semester. There is an advanced mechanics of machinery in the sixth semester. There is a finite element method in seventh semester. Sorry, I'm sorry. There is a design of machine elements in seventh semester. And there is a design of machine elements too in the eighth semester and a robotics. So you see, we have grouped, we have picked some definite subjects from all these and then we have put it in one kitty or a bag, which is under mechanics. Such groupings can be done. And then we can always identify that these are the four core courses or four core topics in mechanical engineering. They are mechanics, thermodynamics, materials and manufacturing, and then there is a mathematics. In addition to this, as I said, you will have to learn civil engineering, electrical engineering, electronics engineering, and then few labs related to electrical machines, etc., etc., etc. Now, why should we learn all this? Why should we learn mechanics, thermodynamics, materials and manufacturing, and why mathematics? So I've, I've taken a typical example, which is something which is familiar to all of us. This is, a, this, is the, this is the heart of an automobile. This is what is called as an engine. We have all seen this in one form or the other. Now you see, if, you, if an engineer wants to decide what should be the amount of fuel that would be required to produce so much of power, he should have a knowledge of thermodynamics. Now, unless and until he knows what should be the pumping power of the pump that he is going to employ in this particular unit to pump fuel into this, the, the, the component is not going to work. So that means you should have some idea or basic knowledge related to fluid mechanics, fluid machinery. Now, he should know about heat transfer because ultimately this heat is going to be transmitted. So he should know what is the amount of heating that happens in all places. And then if it happens so, then you should be able, you should be very cautious about the different materials that are used in this particular system. If the temperature at any point, if it crosses the safe limit, then he should find an alternative material which can substitute this. That means he should have a knowledge of materials engineering. Finally, yeah, we'll have to, you will have to give this design to get it manufactured. So that means you should know aspects related to manufacturing engineering. And moreover, first, before doing that, you should have designed all this. When we say design, you should have decided on the size of these components here. That means you should evaluate, you should find what are the stresses. And then we should know that these are not static stresses in the sense that this system is not stationary. It is undergoing oscillations or reciprocating motion under very high frequency. So these loads are highly dynamic. So therefore it would require is knowledge about dynamics of machinery, vibrations, and then of course, strength of materials, which will tell him that these are the levels of stresses. So, so you see, and then finally, if he wants to make, if he wants to make quantifiable, est quantifiable estimates related to this stress, related to this temperature, related to this flux, related to this stress, everything, he would require a lot of mathematical calculations. So mathematics is at the backbone. Without this, there is no engineering. So that means it is, it's a part and parcel of whatever we learn. So I'm going to do this. Now often we confuse design. So design, so if you go back to this previous slide, we see that it is a design process. Now often people mistake design for all these things. So I've shown some four funny figures there. People say that they are not, they are new designs. They're not new designs in a true engineering sense. They're just aesthetic modifications of few components. That, no, that is not design. I'm not going to the details of this because it's of no use discussing at this forum. But you should know that design is a very structured mathematical way of establishing the usefulness of each and every component, every piece that is part of what you conceive to be your hardware and what you want it to be there in your final realized product. It's a very mathematical procedure. It has got definite science related to all what subject that we said, it has got connection with mechanics of solids. It has got connection with dynamics of machinery. It has got connection with fluid machinery, everything. And finally, if you want to solve them, then ultimately you will have to solve those equations, which are in the form of mathematical equations and you solve them. So next I will quickly run through the different uh, practical courses that one would undergo when you are doing a course in BTEC in mechanical engineering. This is from an engine. This is a picture from an engine's lab where you will see an engine connected with lot many sensors, which would 
which is connected to data acquisition systems and a computer which will tell us the different parameters uh, the changes in different parameters when this particular engine is subjected to different loading conditions so this is part of the engine's lab this is from the hydraulic machinery lab where you would do experiments on pumps and turbines to understand their performance you will plot their characteristics how their performance changes under different operating conditions now this one is from thermal engineering lab where you would do experiments related to heat transfer coefficients say for example if you want to try a new particular coolant which is a heat transfer fluid into this you have, you have, you have come up with a new design for the coolant and you want to test it before that you make some hypothesis like when you are using this then this is going to increase the heat transfer efficiency now you want to test it so that means you want to evaluate the heat transfer coefficient such experiments can be done here this is another example from a solar collector say for example if you change the material absorb absorbing material from the uh, collector plate how does the efficiency would change so that is a new problem you can you can do your experiments here you can do your research here now this is another uh, equipment from a laboratory which is there in some institutions which may not be there it's called as a rotor balancing machine rotor balancing machine which is from the dynamics lab you can see that what you see here is a part of a is part of a turbine here now when this is subjected to rotary loads how will the vibration characteristics of the system would change is it uh, acceptable is it below the maximum limits that can be considered as practically okay and safe or else what should we do to improve the dynamic characteristics of such systems to improve vibration and noise now this this picture is from a lab from where people do uh, laboratory practice related to manufacturing practice so what they do is they practice gear cutting thread cutting manufacturing of different components this is another picture from the lab of course not from my lab this is taken from the internet so it shows a student who is trying to learn a manufacturing operation in an equipment or a tool which is called as lathe where which are used to make uh, shafts and cylindrical objects now having done this i spent few minutes on what people do after their course in btech so after your btech or after your engineering course there are two options like one is either you go for jobs or you go for higher studies now under jobs i have listed few jobs there like you 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 start i mean you 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 become a design engineer or you become an analyst you become an r and d engineer you become a quality assurance engineer or you becoming an you become an industrial engineer as a designer say for example if you join typical uh, design firms in india like for example you join ducom you join reliance you go you join verna power gas you join uday where you get uh, you get different challenging design problems from different clients who would require design solutions from you and then you base you use your knowledge to find solutions for them or else you become an analyst because of from your knowledge of whatever you have learned in the form of uh, simulations in your various computational facilities which you which you do as part of your course you become an analyst you analyze heat transfer you analyze stresses using standard the software packages like ansys fluent or nisa or cesar or else you go and join an r and d organization like premier r and d organizations like brc isro or drdo or you become a quality assurance engineer say quality assurance engineer say for example you join as a quality assurance engineer in a company like skf bearings where you where you are in charge of looking at the quality of the products that are being made and or else you become an industrial engineer where you become a manager where you manage the production process in an industrial stream so this list is now by no means exhaustive i've just picked some four or five different examples of how a mechanical engineer finds employment after his btech course it can be a designer it can be an analyst it can be an r and d engineer it can be a quality assurance engineer it can be an industrial engineer now coming to higher studies if you want to become a researcher or if you want to become a academician then you go for your masters either you do your msc or mtech in premier institutes like as our previous speakers mentioned like you go and do it in iits or nits or iasc you earn your msc or mtech which can lead you to the phd and then maybe afterwards you can do your post doc also and but that route is uh, uh, for the academy for the future academicians and scientists or else if you want to become managers like because of your basic knowledge in related to manufacturing industrial engineering production engineering etc if you want to become managers 
who can manage those engineering enterprises, then you go and join for management courses or MBAs, MBA courses or management in business administration, where you go and specialize in management related to HR, management related to finance, management related to technical aspects, management related to inventory and logistics. But a basic course related to all these managements are part of the BTEC course. It's there in the curriculum, though I did not mention about those things. And then ultimately you have to find an employment. Sorry, yeah, you have to find an employment. So if you want to find employment, then these are the different attributes that you would require. You would require knowledge, you would require skills. You, are, you will have to have some significant level of understanding of what you have learned. And then you will, in addition to this, something which cannot be taught in engineering colleges directly is about personal attributes. So I'll just run through it very quickly. So knowledge is something that you would learn in due course if you are part of this program and if you're successfully completing it, because it's about learning theory, appearing for exams and doing your seminars and routine courses. Skills can be acquired by undergoing practical sessions, doing a project, developing analytical skills by quick problem solving and quizzes. Whereas understanding is something that you, the student will have to check his level of understanding by undergoing advanced tests like GATE or attending VIVAS or entering into discussions with scholars over the internet. Now, personal attributes are something which are very essential for somebody to find an employment. If your employer wants to feel that this man has to, can safely join my company and would contribute for the betterment of this industry or enterprise or company, then there, there are so many other attributes that are very essential of which some are honesty, being trustworthy, being responsible, being a team player, being communicative and being continually improving and willing, and, and willing to improve his knowledge base. So I will summarize this. So what, what did we discuss? We found that the curriculum of mechanical engineering, though it comprises of 50 or 60 different odd subjects, they can be classified into four different main core branches. One is mechanics, thermodynamics, materials and manufacturing, and mathematics. So a mechanical engineer is basically an engineer whose basic science is mechanical engineering sciences. And in fact, to emphasize it further, it is mechanics. But point number two is we should know the difference between an engineer and a mechanic or perhaps a technician. An engineer is a designer, is an analyst, is a consultant, is a solution provider, is a technical manager. So this point is something that I could not elaborate because of two reasons. One is because of the time constraint and also because, I mean, even if I explain, most of you may not understand what design means unless and until you really do and hence have some hands-on experience. The third thing is design. We should know that design is a very systematic procedure with proper proofs and calculations. So that is also something that you would learn as an engineer, whether you are in mechanical engineering or in some other engineering course like civil or electrical engineering. And finally, at the end of it, we learn that it is not just if you, because this webinar is all about roadmap to success. If you want to be successful, then you have to find a job. Just completing this course is not enough. So you have to find a job or if you want to become an, if you want to, uh, if you want to, enlarge your scope of knowledge, then you should continue your studies, which can lead you to a postgraduate degree in the form of MSc or MTech, which can lead to your PhD, or else you should go and do your master's in business administration. Now, the last thing is about employability. Now, employability is something which is dependent on knowledge, skills, understanding, and personal attributes. So institutes would, would focus on all these aspects when you join for a course, they will do courses either consciously or indirectly to enhance these attributes related to knowledge, skills, understanding, and personal attributes. Now, the next thing is about if somebody is asking you like whether you should find it interesting. See, ultimately, it depends on your curiosity. What are you curious about? Are you curious about learning thermodynamics? Are you curious about learning vibrations? Are you curious about learning about designing machines? Well, then you would find it interesting, otherwise not. Next thing is, are you creative enough? That is question number two. So the first thing, are you about, are you curious? Even people interested in basic science also would find that answer to be on the affirmative saying that, yes, we are curious. But then next question is, are you creative? So it's a very special job, this engineering. If you want to be a successful, successfully practicing professional engineer, then you should have a mindset 
which can address different needs and find creative solutions for those needs. So this is, this is how I conclude. So I'm wishing you all great future and careers in choosing. Hope it was useful. And finally, I should acknowledge because all those images that I've used for this webinar, they were taken from the World Wide Net, Web and the Internet. Though I have not given acknowledged there, I have not acknowledged one particular source because there were very few, there were a lot of images which I had taken from the web. I acknowledge the World Wide Web, the Internet for providing me all those images in making this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, but we have some questions from our audience side. I would request Mr. Sriram to please moderate the Q&A session. Uh, thank you, sir, for your wonderful session. Thank you, Gunnar. Yeah, we have a question from a participant, Gopika. Yeah. What is the opportunities of mechanical engineering in defense? In defense? Yes, sir. Is in it defense. in defense? Yeah, defense. Oh, you see, yeah, you see, if you see DRDO, if you see an organization like DRDO, you see it's basically connected with is a research and development activities related to defense, number one. And then defense requires engineers. Defense requires engineers. Uh, if you see, in fact, as far as my knowledge goes, there is a there is a definite engineering core group in army. It's there in Air Force. In fact, my father was an engineer in Air Force. So there is a lot of scope for engineers in defense. In fact, there is one way of serving this country. Having learned so much from this point, from this land, having learned so much from these institutions of this great country, it is a great opportunity for you to go and serve this country. In fact, serve is defense. Having undergone a course in mechanical engineering, there is a lot of scope. See, if you want to, as I said, like, see, I've, I've given an example related to a gyro. It is about controlling or cruising or stabilizing missiles, rockets, everything. The basic science is mechanics. Uh, yes, so we sense. have. Yeah, so we have a few more questions, but before that, uh, dear participants, we have shared a feedback form in the chat comment box. Please spare one moment to fill it up. And so the next question is, uh, is it very competitive to get a mechanical engineering core job? From Shafi. Uh, yes, it depends on the institute, to be very frank. Okay. It, it depends on which institute you are going to join. I don't want to name them. Okay. See, very few core companies go to institutes. As you know that the demand for engineers nowadays are mainly for, I mean, jobs which are not related, really related to engineering. But then there are few core companies, I don't want to name them, they go to good institutes and definitely hire. Even if you look at Infosys, they, they, they would require uh, engineering specialists with uh, core knowledge. Yeah. Okay. There's, so there's we... lots of... okay, sir. Thank you. We have another question uh, from Bhavana Shivadas, a participant. Is motor automobile engineering a higher study branch of mechanical engineering or is it a separate branch of engineering? No, it is a separate branch of engineering. People have this misconception that mechanical engineering is about automobile engineering. It is definitely not. It is definitely not. As you said, you see, mechanical engineering is a highly structured uh, formal uh, course where there is a lot of emphasis on applied sciences as I said, related to mechanics of machinery, theory of elasticity, mechanics of fluids, mathematics, all these are involved, which people should make use of to design and analyze engineering systems where automobile is, is, a, is, a, is, is related to mechanical engineering mostly, but it is, a, it is a course, it is a discipline on its own. Okay, thank you, sir. And we have one more last question. Uh, what other branches of studies like aerospace engineering can be taken as a post graduation after mechanical engineering? Is it possible? Oh, yes. yes, yes, that's a nice question. You see, if you see in the Institute of Science, there's a great aerospace engineering department there. I mean, most of the faculty there are mechanical engineers. Uh, so there's a lot of scope for aerospace engineering. You can go for aerospace, you can go a specialization in aerospace. You can go for a specialization in uh, atmospheric and oceanographic sciences. You can go for a specialization in robotics. That is one aspect where you would require a lot of information related to rigid body dynamics. It's a very hard course. It's a very hard subject. You would require information related to control systems. You would require a lot of information related to automation, control, I mean, as I said, control systems and artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of scope for higher studies if you're going for mechanical engineering. Yes, 
the scope is unlimited okay thank you sir that's with the questions okay. thanks very much uh sir thank you so much thank you so much sir for uh, a big thank you to anirudhan sir for acknowledging the queries and concerns of our viewers also i would like to extend my sincere gratitude to you sir for um, uh, providing all the insights and wonderful knowledge in the session to the upcoming youth thank you so much uh, with that thank you i triple a thank you i triple a for giving me this forum it has been a proud privilege thank you